हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम टू कंप्यूटर साइंस एंड आई टी गेट कोचिंग डोंट फॉर गेट टू सब्सक्राइब माई चैनल एंड प्रेस द बेल आइकन टू गेट द इंस्टेंट नोटिफिकेशन ऑफ माई फ्री लेक्चर हाई एवरी वन इन दिस लेक्चर वी आर गोइंग टू सी इंट्रोडक्शन टू थियोरी ऑफ कंप्यूटेशन ओके सो वॉट इज कंप्यूटेशन एवरीथिंग वी आर गोइंग टू सी ए बेसिक बिल्डिंग ब्लॉक्स एवरीथिंग वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट ओके नाउ फ्रॉम दर्ड कंप्यूटेशन वॉट कम्स इन यूर माइंड इट मीन्स लाइक इट इज गोइंग टू कंप्यूट समथिंग ओके मीन्स कंप्यूटेशन so from the word itself it is coming that it is going to compute something so here in this in theory of computation we are going to see how we can compute something okay so in introduction to introduction of theory of computation so we will see what is computation okay so it is a exact definition so what is computation computation is any type of calculation that include both arithmetic and non arithmetic steps and follows a well defined model for example an algorithm so what is computation computation is any type of calculation it is any type of calculation that includes both arithmetic arithmetical and non arithmetical steps so that is going to include both arithmetical as well as non arithmetical steps and follows a well defined model okay so it is also following a well means like step by step model first you have to do this then this then not like haphazardly okay so it is arithmetic like a plus 2 2 plus 3 a plus b a plus b plus c 2 into 3 like arithmetical now non arithmetical step means like after a there should be b okay so a should be followed by b b so it's a non arithmetical okay but it is having a very defined it is going to follow a very defined model okay so in generally in calculator or computers whatever they are doing it's just doing a computation so any task that is performed by other calculator or computer is also a computation because there we are either doing arithmetical or non arithmetical steps okay so that we have seen computation the we are going to start the basic building block of toc so what is basic building block of toc first basic building block of toc is symbol so what is symbol it is a basic building block of toc we can represent anything as symbol you can represent me as a simple pen as a simple my this specs any things you can consider as a symbol so in gate exam they will define you that you consider only these things as symbols either they will say 0 1 a b anything they will restrict it because you can in universe anything even your pen paper anything you will consider as symbol just like in alphabet we have in english alphabet they have restricted at 26 letters you can consider but here in symbol it can consider anything so that's why in gate exam they will restrict that you use this only this set of symbols only you are allowed okay so every time depend upon the question it is going to vary so what is symbol it is a basic building block of toc you can consider anything as a symbol like main human water bottle anything okay so let's see the definition it is a basic building block of toc a symbol can be anything like letter main omen pen number it is example a b 01 male female anything you can consider as a symbol now alphabet since you can consider anything as a symbol so i need to restrict it how i can restrict it by defi defining another term that is alphabet so alphabet what is alphabet it is a finite set of input alphabet it is going to be a finite set of it is going to be a finite set of input alphabet okay so in when in gate alphabet they will represent okay and it is even represented by sigma it is even represented by sigma okay so means it is denoted by sigma you should write it okay so what is sigma so in alphabet it is going to say it's a finite alphabet like finite set of input symbol like ab it is a finite set okay now you are restricting that this this symbol input symbol you can consider so whenever they will restrict that it is a finite set of input symbol then it is your sigma that is called as alphabet sometimes it is even called as input alphabet alphabet even sometimes input alphabet represented by sigma so what is it it is a finite set of always it is a finite set of input symbol now see string so we have seen input alphabet so first we have seen symbol then input alphabet now we will see string so what is a string a string is a finite sequence of here also it is going to be finite and it is even asked in your gate exam okay so this is statement that finite is even asked in your gate exam in mcq is given 
four statement they were asking out of this four statement which st statements are correct okay so if you see what is a string a string is a finite sequence of symbol a string is always going to be a finite sequence of symbol defined over any particular alphabet only if your alphabet is your 0 1 if your alphabet is your 0 1 okay so what is a string a string is a finite sequence a string is a finite sequence of or say finite sequence of symbols defined over any particular alphabet only so this is your particular alphabet so it is all the finite combination of these two is going to be a string so 0 is one combination 1 is one combination 0 1 is one combination 1 0 is one combination 1 1 is one combination 1 0 1 is one combination now there can be one combination where I will not take either 0 or 1 so there can be one combination where I am not going to take neither 0 nor 1 so that represent how to represent that by using epsilon by using epsilon okay see epsilon means this string is saying that it is a finite sequence of symbols so it is going to be a finite sequence of symbols defined over any particular alphabet so this is your particular alphabet so finite sequence of symbols so one sequence can have 0 another sequence can have 1 another sequence can have 0 and 1 the next sequence can have 1 0 there can be one sequence now where I am not having neither 0 nor 1 then how to represent that that combination by using epsilon okay so length of that string so see this is a string so length of that string is 0 but it is a string okay a student generally get confused in this it is a string epsilon is a string but whose length is 0 but whose length is 0 its length is going to be 0 okay it is a epsilon string whose length is going to be a so this combination is saying that it is not having neither 0 nor 1. Understood? Now see if the example is your a comma b, if sigma is your a comma b, then what are the strings are possible? Then the strings possible are given below. Epsilon. When neither a nor b, only one alphabet can possible a b. When two means when length two is string, a a a b b a b b. So it's it's a combination of symbols, okay, defined over this alphabet. Now, A, B, C. This is not a string. Why? Because C is a symbol which is not defined here. I can take the combination of any symbol but it should be defined here in the sigma. If I will change the sigma as A, B, C, then it is a valid string. But now my sigma is A, B. So that's why it is not a string now. This is not a string. J is not a string now. So it is going to be a combination, finite sequence of symbols defined over any particular alphabet only. So it should be your whatever alphabet is there, that combination you can take. You can't take any other combination. So if A B is there, then null A, A B like this, length 3 strings, length 4, length 5, it will keep on growing. Okay. Now see the question. So it is saying that how many strings of length n are possible over the alphabet a comma b. So here your alphabet is your a comma b. Now they are asking how many strings of length n are possible. How many strings of length n are possible. Now let us assume that your sigma is same a comma b. Okay. Means when sigma is your a comma b means that strings are possible means from a and b only. You can't see c, d, e, f. Okay, only symbols that you are allowed to take is A, B. Okay, now they are asking how many strings of length, I will say 0, length is 0. How many strings are possible of length 0? Only one string that is itself. How many strings of length 1 possible? So length 1, either A or B, 2, this one. Now how many strings of length 2? How length 2 you can form? First symbol can be either A or B. Then second symbol can be either A or B. Because these are only, you are having only two options, A or B. Not here, if you are taking first symbol as B, then second symbol can be either A 
of B. So you are going to get A, A B, B A, B B. So you are going to get how many symbols? Four. In same way, if I ask you how many symbols of length three are possible, so first bit can be either A or B. Only two possibility. First bit can be either A and B. Now second bit can again either A or B. Can again either A or B. Now third bit. Again, either A or B. Again, either A or B. So here, in this combination, you will get A. This combination, you will get A A B. This combination, you will get A B A. This combination, you are getting A B B. Similarly, here, when first bit is your A, then second. When first bit is your B, then second bit can be either A or B. Then second bit can be either A or B A B. See. In every bit, I am having two options because our input alphabet is A or B. Only two, A B. Okay. So here you will get B A. Here you will get B A B. Here you will get B B A. Here you will get B. -B. Now how you are getting? First bit, how many options? Two options. Then second bit. If you have taken either this or this, first bit you have getting two options. Again, after selecting one bit, you are getting two options into two. Two to the power, say four. Now here, yeah, first bit again two option. Again second bit two option. Again third bit two option. Say two to the power three eight. Now if I ask, like if you will say, if I make this as first bit. Two options, either A or B. You can place two. Second bit again, you are having two options, either A or B. Two. Again, third bit you are having two options, either A comma B. Again, fourth bit you are having two options, either A comma B. So it will get into multiply, into multiply. So it is going to total our four, four length. How many strings of length four are possible? But here they are asking how many strings of length n are possible. So it will keep on going like till n, okay, n times. So when it is three times to the three, when it is two times to the two, when it is n times, n times, okay, when it is m times, n times, then it is going to be two to the power n, okay. So for these questions, we are having two to the power n number of Strings are possible if the length are n. Okay, so how we are getting? So it depends upon your the number of symbols you can choose. Okay, if I make this question some different, we will get different answer. Okay, now I just slightly change the question. See here, here I am now I am asking how many strings of length n are possible over the alphabet A B C. Now I change the alphabet. Now your alphabet is A B and C. Okay. So in first bit you are having three options either A, B, and C. Okay. In second bit you are having another A, B, C. So first bit you are having three options. Now again in second bit you are having again three options A, B, C. So for two bit, okay, for two bit how many you will get? Three into three that is three square. Now see here we will see how we are getting A. B, C. For this also, we are having three options. Second bit can have A, B, C. We will get A, then A, B, then A, C, then B, A, then B, B, then B, C, then C, A, then C, B, then C, C. Okay. So these are all possible combination. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we got nine strings. Okay. So if so same way, if you are having, they are asking for length n, for length 2, 3 into 3, length n, 3, first bit, 3 options, either A, B, C, again, 3 options, A, B, C, again, 3 options, A, B, C, again, 3 options, A, B, C, like this. So we are taking 3 into 3 into 3, till n times, because it is saying length n, so it is going to be 3 to the power n. So whatever going to be the number of, symbol in the input alphabet that is going to be the 
So let us assume number of symbol. Let us assume number of symbol. Number of symbols is mod sigma. So I am assuming that number of symbol is mod sigma. Then, then number of then number of strings number of strings possible possible over possible over the given alphabet over the given alphabet of length n now i'm saying length n is mod sigma to the power n so whatever will be the number of symbol in this sigma it is going to that three like number of symbol two like number of symbol so whatever is going to the number of symbol to the power mod n okay so let us assume number of symbol is mod sigma the number of strings possible over the given alphabet of length n is mod sigma to the power 